Good afternoon and welcome to another series of videos with MyBenchJeweler.com Today we're looking at a uh, ladies Benrith CA1 It's <laughs> ancient but it doesn't run and my guess would be that it's full of rust but the uh, customer wants to rebuild the watch for their grandmother and I'm going to oblige them so if we can find parts first of all you can tell that there's a little bluish green right around the outside edge and that's generally a good sign of rust that's building building up the stem doesn't want to come out very well so and the back side of it doesn't want to run at all and it's fully wound so We'll take a look at this. It's a Benra CA1. It's a common movement. Uh, probably can find a used one that we can interchange parts with. But first of all, we're just going to see whether we can clean this one and how much rust damage is done, if that's what's causing the trouble. The balance wheel on this is not broken. That's usually the, the case with these old watches. This does not have a shock spring in it. So, if it drops on the floor or anything like that, you're, you're done. Let's see if we can get in here a little closer. Ah. Ah. Alrighty, so we're going to look here and we can tell if the balance wheel doesn't have a, a broken pivot on the staff. But it doesn't want to run and it is sticking in there so probably the, the oils dried out of it and a number of other things may be going wrong too so we'll start <clears throat> by uh, removing the hands we'll set those Then the next thing we want to do is lift the dial. Yeah, <laughs> what I suspected. You can see the rust in it. top a lot of that looks like surface rust so it'll probably clean up we'll see how bad the rust is what I was looking at was the hour, hour wheel here Wanted to see if there was rust underneath of it, and there is, so I ought to clean that. Fiberglass brush does a miracle on a lot of things. Now this one has cap jewels on it. Cap jewel is right here and the cap jewel is right here. So those will have to come loose. We'll peg these jewels when we get to that point. And we'll go from there. So, remove the cannon pinion. Now, 
a little rust right there. I've seen a little rust on the uh, barrel wheel. Now this is just a <clears throat> regular uh, watch movement holder, so we'll I need to close those uh, dial screws too. Yeah, that didn't work. Left hand. Those can break off real easy when you don't know. Generally, these are left hand. Okay, a lot of rust on there. These don't have a uh, waterproof crown on them, so a lot of times these little ladies uh, wash their hands and stuff like that and the water goes through that crown right here and it drips right on in. So that's why these get so much rust in them. Now, on most of these winding pinion gears, they're going to be a left hand thread. So, this way would be tightening it, and the opposite would be loosening it. So, we'll check it out. When you try one of those, if it doesn't want to uh, move, make sure you don't try and force it because you'll bust that screw right off in there and then you'll have problems can get them out of there but not all not, not very easily and these particular screws were not marked as to whether they were right or left hand threads Go ahead and yeah. that screwdriver's not going to work.
Doesn't look like any rust in the uh, screws there, so we'll remove the barrel bridge. And look at the rust. <laughs> All right. Next thing to do is remove this barrel. Oh. I'd imagine this might have to have. A and spring. we've got a little rust on this gear. Winding gears don't look too bad. Ooh, that's bad. Watch bench, a real watch bench, you'll have a catch drawer. Guess where that went? Right in the catch drawer. That doesn't happen very often. Not with me. Usually it's on the floor and I spend an hour looking. Alright. So far we've been really lucky with the fact that this is just surface rust. I bet this has an old style mainspring rather than the new stainless ones. And if the water got inside there, it will have probably rusted that up. So now it's time for the bench block. This is a bench block. Bench blocks have holes in them. And that's so that we can put parts in there without losing them. I may have to get on eBay and see if I can find a CA1 Benris watch. Reasonable. Most of the time they want $40, $50 for them and that's just too much. Won't pay it. I can, I can clean the rust off most of this. Uh, the one thing I, I'm not sure about is that mainspring. This arbor I can put on the lathe and polish it. Okay. Now to take that mainspring cap off, Everybody wants to try and pry right here for some reason, and that creates a big problem because it can bend that cap, and then that cap don't want to go back on there. So the easiest way to do do that is put your tweezers between the gear plate and just push it down. That removes the the, the uh, cap off the mainspring. And there's rust in there, so I imagine that mainspring is going to be rusted too, but that's a newer mainspring. Might have gotten lucky. So let's go ahead and get the rust out of this.
so far. All right. Now, probably going to have to take the winding assembly apart. This has got a really tiny hairspring. See it? So we'll set that aside for the time being. Don't see much rust in there, but a little in the corner here. No rust on the pellet bridge. Pellet fort in pellet jewels. No rust. That's nice. A lot of rust here though. So the next thing we want to do is take off the Oops, train wheel bridge. No rust on the train wheel bit bridge. Now when you clean these, you try and go along one direction, that way you're, it gives it a smooth directional look. Not that it really matters, but I just like to have it look nice. So I just go in one direction like that to see. Now I'm going to take a look at this a little closer. I don't see any rust on the uh, pinion gears. So let's take another one out. And that one looks good. And escape wheel. Don't think there'll be any problems with it because I didn't see any any rust in that area at all. A little de-rusting on the uh, pillar plate inside. And uh, I think I'll go ahead and disassemble the uh, pinion and de-rust it. Either the main, the I'm sorry, the clip spring underneath here is is rotted out, or this this boot is frozen. Yeah, I don't think it is. 
I'm not going to take a chance. It doesn't look bad. But I just don't. You know, I know it, there has been rust there, so we're going to. Now. I got 33,981 screwdrivers and all the blades are bad. <laughs> I should learn to fix them. And we got one that's frozen in there, so I'm going to have to do a little adjusting. Okay, you get this tore down, I'll peg all the jewels, take these two cap jewels out for you, and uh, we'll uh, continue working on this. I kind of wanted to show you the whole the whole operation so you get an idea of how this is done. Uh, this is intermediate level, this is not beginner level. And uh, I would say you'd be in the intermediate 7 on a scale of 1 to 10 before I'd even consider, consider doing it. What would be real nice is you could get on eBay and buy a bunch of old movements and just le learn how to disassemble and reassemble. And uh, then you know how to work with the, the hair springs, and they're not the easiest to work with. Uh, I will show you how to do this, but uh, care should be taken when you're working with a hair spring because they're not forgiving whatsoever. Okay. So let me get the rest of this de rusted here a little bit, and we'll get back with you. We moved all the uh, rust off the winding pinion, and I've removed uh, the cap screws from the. Uh, plate here, the pillar plate. For some reason I'm missing one of them. I don't know where it flew off to. And I'm hoping I can find it. Had it rolled off somewhere. Don't see it. But I find it though. All right, there is a cap jewel. And you can see the dried up oil in there. Here's the other cap jewel. And you can see the dried up oil in there. So, the next thing to do is to peg them. Now those have been done. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to peg all the jewels and uh, disassemble the uh, balance wheel and hairspring. What we're going to do here is we'll show you how that's done and then uh, peg all the this thing's going to the cleaner and we'll wheel. get her done and we'll come back and see what there we've four got of them as far we'll as being the center. Clean. And we'll go all the way around. And we'll turn it upside down.
they're all clear. All I'm doing is knocking off all the dried oil. I like to peg these and I've always believed in that. I believe that uh, pegging them gets that dried oil out in between the uh, jewel housings. I don't know what I've done with them all. Now the cap jewels you'll have to do the uh, from the inside. What I look for on that stick is uh, on those that peg wood is whether I've got a little fine tip on that indicating that I've gone clear through. And then I want to make sure by looking through the jewels, the holes, that I don't have any piece of piff wood or something stuck in there. So these are done. Only one thing left to do is show you how to uh, show you how to take the balance cock apart. Now there's a gate on these. That you have to open. That's open. And then we have to be very careful. Last thing I want to do is break a staff. Now, since I last talked to you here, I did uh, close the uh, dial screws and tightened them up. And our balance is free. Here you see 
the hairspring and the pin. Let's see if we can come in closer so you can see what we're looking at. There's your where your pin is and your foot. And there's your hairspring, there's the collar, the collar has been pinned. So that's that would make up a hairspring. And uh, the back side of this has a double roller drill and it's got a single roller on the on the right here. And you can probably see it. That all looks good. I don't see anything wrong with the balance staff. So we're kind of in good luck there, or good good shape there. Now there's a cap jewel over this. All right, got that done. Woo! Close. <laughs> All right, last thing we want to do is peg this. And turn it over. Clean the glue out of the top. Clean. Okay. We want to tighten up that balance screw. And we are ready for cleaning. So I will get this in the cleaner and uh, part two of this video will be putting this thing back together and seeing if it will run. So as always this is uh, the Bench Jeweler and uh, appreciate anybody that likes to watch these that's uh, it's a joy for me to show you how it's done. Uh, after 40 years I, I'm trying to pass on a little bit of this ta talent <laughs> if, it, if we can call it talent or skill and uh, see if we can get some younger people more interested into the watchmaking field I still think it's a rewarding uh, uh, situation, but uh, there's very darn few people who who uh, actually uh, are going into the field. Uh, and all the electronic watches, they're they're uh, they're a nightmare to work on. But we will do a couple of them too as we find time, and uh, we'll uh, keep going with the jewelry uh, end of it. I love. Uh, doing and making jewelry and I'll be happy to show people how it's done and uh, we also uh, do casting and carving and you know I've got a lot of lot of things I'd love to, to take time to see if we can train people in, or, or tutor them into uh, learning how to do the job and do it right so thanks for watching and we'll see you on the downscape